Eight minutes. Sponsored by Sinclair Heating and Cooling for 24/7 comfort on call. All right, Brad here with three brilliant minutes. Now, first of all, we got to promote this. Uh, this is a special tomorrow. Yes, 30 minute, 30 brilliant. I didn't know you were my, capable. <laughs> <laughs> my top 10 favorite stories from this past year will air tomorrow at noon here on WBAY. Good, it could be competing for eyeballs. Obviously, you got the Packers game. You've got a feast in front of you, you know, but it, it'll Set be Set the there. DVR. Right, okay. Hey, I wanted to follow up on this story that we first brought you a couple of weeks ago. You were working yes. with me then, and of course we've been following it this week. The astronauts a few weeks ago working outside of the International Space Station drops this tool bag. Then over the weekend I saw that it was visible in binoculars, okay? And we told you last night when and where to look. One of our viewers saw it. Wow. He says, I was able to see the tool bag. It was barely visible with the binoculars I used, but I was able to see it. It was real faint compared to the space station. For every once in a while, it seemed to flash a little bit brighter. I assume it might be rotating and catching the sun better. I also did see it with binoculars. I have some advice for you along with Pete over in Chiocton. The trick is, I think, to hold your binoculars really, really still find the space station and then look in front of it a little bit farther than you might imagine and look for a little dim speck that's just you know moving ahead of the space station. You do have another opportunity. Tomorrow evening, 5.26 p.m., it'll appear in the western sky and move to the northeast. 5.26 in the west tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Never thought I'd peer into the sky looking for tools. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I heard they were expensive. Like. 150,000, I heard a report. <laughs> Everything is custom made, yes, and then you have to launch it. Okay, I've got another one for you. Tomorrow, Thanksgiving, some of you might be asked, would you like a glass of wine, red wine? Do you mm -hmm. like red wine? Sure. I like it. It doesn't like me. Mm -hmm. I get a pounding headache, and I guess I'm not alone. In fact, a number of people have this problem. You just have one, Brad. Oh, that's the trick. Okay. <laughs> this comes from UC Davis. <laughs> Why does even a small amount of red wine give some people headaches? Okay, it's been long assumed that it's sulfites in the wine, which are added in there actually to help preserve freshness and prolong its shelf life, okay? But now these researchers say there's something else going on here. Quercetin, it's a flavanol, one of those plant substances that is supposedly good for you. It's uh, antioxidant. In hmm. fact, this quercetin you can actually buy as a supplement, as a health food supplement, wow. okay? But it's the problem for some people, the people who get headaches from red wine. So what happens is, is that once the alcohol from red wine and the flavanols are in your bloodstream, most people's bodies can convert it into another substance that you quickly metabolize and no problem. But some people, they can't metabolize not only that substance, but then also they can't metabolize the alcohol. Mm. So the problem becomes, you know, you get a racing heart, you feel flush, and you get that minor Dehydrated. headache. It's, it's sort of like a little baby hangover. Yeah. But that's what's going on there. Now, this is going into human studies next, but maybe coming our way someday, a little pill you take before you drink red wine, no headaches. And you can have one. All right, thank you, Brad. Okay.